From dismantling Jeff Neal on the feet to already being hailed as the next champion of the welterweights, this is why fighters are scared of Shavkat Rachmanov. I mean, he just outstruck one of the best boxers, Jeff Neal, at welterweight. If that's not scary, then what is? UFC 285 was full of action, and the fight of the night was rightly awarded to the showdown between the Nomad and Neal. This was Shavkat's first match against a ranked opponent, and most people thought that he'd try to take the fight on the ground as much as possible, but that didn't happen. Yeah, I admit that Jeff did pretty well to fend off the takedown attempts, but instead of turning off completely, Rachmanov really stepped up. He proved that he isn't a one-dimensional fighter and didn't hesitate in engaging with hands of steel in a boxing exchange. You know how dangerous Neil is on his feet, but Shavkat was just more than willing to brawl. You guys must have seen how fighters kind of lose it when something out of the ordinary happens. It seems that the young Kazakh is pretty unfazed by it all. He lost his mouth guard in the middle of the fight. Eating a shot like that was one thing, but going on without his mouthpiece is just another level of badass. This just shows that Rachmanov is more than an athlete. He's actually unafraid to fight. He didn't care about his own safety. For him, it was just a street fight. And in that, anything goes. In fact, the referee didn't even notice he'd lost his mouthpiece, and Shavkat didn't even point it out. He would have just gone on fighting without it if Joe Rogan hadn't called it out to the ref. 15 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke and still undefeated Shav What's more is that he took those punches from Neil like a champ, showcasing an iron chin, and responded in kind by landing a lot of clean strikes of his own. He was beating Neil at his own game so impressively that he had everyone on the edges of their seats. The fight itself was pretty close, but it was clear that Rachmanov was pulling ahead, and since Jeff wasn't allowing him to score a takedown, the Nomad grabbed hold of a rear naked choke on his feet and submitted the UFC veteran, and the win propelled him to the top of the division. He's now within touching distance of the top dogs. All he has to do is win against a top five contender at welterweight, and his title shot is all but guaranteed. Rachmanov proved himself to be a complete fighter in his latest match, so he's likely to do really well against the guys at the top of the table, which is dominated by fighters with a grappling heavy style. This is where even legends such as Steven Thompson have suffered. They can't just hang with these wrestlers in the octagon, but Shavkat can really mix it up when he wants to. That makes him a real threat to the top contenders at 170 pounds. What's even more impressive is the Nomad's professional record. He is currently 17 and zero with all finishes. I mean, the man has never banked on the judges to hand him a win. He's either knocked out his opponents or submitted them. That's the best record from a rising prospect in the UFC we've seen in a while now. All of that may be very impressive, but what sets him apart is his fighting IQ. Shavkat looks like a more seasoned veteran rather than a young prospect when he's in that octagon. He's calm and always reading his opponents opponents, looking for patterns, openings, and any chinks in their armor. Just look at his fight against Carlston Harris. Rachmanov identified early that whenever he was pressuring his opponent, Harris would throw a lead left hook and circle to the outside to cut the cage. This left his right side open to attacks. Shavkat saw this pattern, and the next time Harris threw a hook, the young Kazakh landed a spinning back kick that winded his opponent. This happened again later in the fight, but this time Harris was anticipating the kick, so he buckled a little to absorb the incoming strike to his lip. Instead of throwing the kick to the body, Shavkat threw it at his head this time and went on to finish Harris with some good old-fashioned ground and pound. That's the kind of vision and composure that takes years for fighters to garner, but it seems like the Nomad already has that champion's mindset. Speaking of which, Rachmanov also never chases finishes. That might sound odd given that he has finished all of his fights until now, but that's how it is. He's like a sniper waiting for the perfect shot, never rushing and never dropping his guard no matter how hurt the other guy may look. Remember what he did to Michelle Prazeris? Even after his head kick rocked the little tank, Shavkat didn't flurry him with punches. Instead, he waited for Prazeris to tip his hand, and he found that moment when the tractor tried shooting for a takedown. Nomad defended this easily and pushed the Brazilian against the cage. After that, he followed up with a brutal step-in knee. Most fighters would have seen nothing but blood after that, and they would have gone for the TKO. But Shavkat saw that Prazeris was done and went in for a much easier finish with a rear naked choke. This sequence was almost identical to how Daniel Cormier describes his fight against John Jones. When Bones rocked him with a head kick, and rather than following up with punches, he just kicked the legs from under DC. This is the level of fighting IQ and patience Rachmanov has. No wonder the best welterweights in the world are quaking in their boots. Make no mistake, these guys are no pushovers, but they know that the Nomad is a very real threat, and they're actively trying to avoid him as much as possible. If a fighter as dangerous as Hamzat Chimaev tries to dodge someone, you know that something's about to get real. The 
Boris was supposedly asked to step in to face the Nomad when the fight between Shavkat and Neil was previously cancelled due to an injury. Of course, they later ended up fighting at UFC 285 anyway, but for a little while the Kazakh had no opponent. Chimaev apparently refused to take the fight, and people started speculating that it was cause he was afraid to throw it down against Rachmanov. I can't say for sure if that was true, but stylistically it would have been a really tough match for Hamzat. Much like him, Shavkat can brawl and wrestle, so it could have been anyone's bet on who was gonna take that one. Also, it would have seriously hurt Borz's title chances if he lost. The two men later made peace as Hamzat will most likely move up to middleweight, but for a minute there, the Nomad really made him sweat. That would have definitely put the top welterweights on alert, cause if Hamzat avoids someone, then that's a road that you really don't want to go down. Maybe that's one of the reasons Wonder Boy's been refusing to face the Nomad too. To be fair to him, Thompson isn't mincing his words at all. He admits that it's a bad matchup for him because he can't really grapple and he wants to improve his craft before fighting another wrestler. The real life Karate Kid faced two identical back-to-back -back decision losses to Bilal Muhammad and Gilbert Burns, both very seasoned grapplers. Right now, he just wants to face a striker because that's what the fans have been asking for and it makes sense for him as well. Shavkat called out the Wonder Boy after his recent win against Neil at UFC 285. He tweeted, who's grappler now tagging Thompson? To which the UFC legend responded by telling Rachmanov that even though he failed all four of his takedown attempts, that still doesn't make him not a grappler. He also added that Shavkat finished the fight with a submission, so he really can't make that claim. Whatever may be the reason, none of the top 170 pounders want to face Rachmanov. So most fans already see him as the next in line for the welterweight throne. His no-nonsense style, his composure inside the octagon, and his immense fighting IQ already make him a very promising prospect for the UFC. On top of that, Rachmanov standing with MMA personalities like Joe Rogan and Laura Sanko has massively helped his stock. I mean, the UFC color caster has already put down Shavkat's name as the next contender for the welterweight title. Sanko herself, being a seasoned analyst and a reporter for the sport, was very impressed with the Nomad's latest performance. There were even some rumors that something was going on between the two of them. But Laura shot it down because she's already married and said that she just admires the guy for his skills inside the cage. Of course, all this hype doesn't sit too well with some people, like the top fighters in the division and Chael Sonnen, who thinks it's too soon to simply hand Rachmanov a shot. The bad guy wants the young Kazakh to prove himself a little more before challenging for the UFC strap, which makes sense because winning against one ranked opponent doesn't qualify him as the best in the world. But even Chael knows that this young Kazakh is a serious contender for the title. So from already being hailed as the next champion of the welterweights to dismantling Jeff Neal on the feet, this is why fighters are scared of Shavkat Rachmanov.